so today I'm going to talk about you know those big Echeverias when you first get them you didn't really really realize how big they're gonna be and also it's kind of a question like how you're gonna pro propagate this because um, some of those things they get the stems get really big like at least like an inch and a half or something but then as they grow they kind of fall down and then their big uh, flower heads get this big um, sometimes you'll see little uh, buds coming out of the actual stems their little um, pups you uh, the little pups coming out of the the stem and you know sometimes what I do is I just let it grow and let it get big enough so that I can propagate it and put it in a different spot however there are some just like my Jennifer it doesn't really do that what happens is that they grow sprouts like in between their leaves or something and those kind of ones you have to also let it grow and then um, propagate it if you want or you can just wait because sometimes when it grow when the pups grow in between the leaves it'll just overtake those leaves and then those leaves die um, just like my Jennifer it's huge it's about this big like huge it's about 12 maybe 18 inches in diameter and then I'm like, okay, this is so beautiful. What am I gonna do when I get the pups? Uh, you kinda, you're, you're not sure whether to propagate it, take it off of the mother, put it in another um, area, or put it in a pot or something. But then the question, the issue about that is that, is it going to survive on its own? So what I do is I just let it grow at least maybe four or five maybe even six inches in diameter where I know and especially when you see roots coming out when you see that then you can go ahead and cut it off the mother stem and then propagate it because the mother will eventually die anyway especially when when they're kind of stretched out like the stems are getting so long what I did with the Dick's pink and um, the I can't remember now but the big ones that I put in the front I showed you where um, I just cut off the the flower head and then replanted it because it was dying I don't know why when the stems get so long that eventually they'll die but then it's really not pushing out any pups in the stem so you just gotta be able to discern whether to go ahead and do that and cut the head off and then replant it but when you do you have to wait a couple of days maybe even three days or four days make sure that the the cut because it's going to be an inch and a half in diameter so the cut has to you have to make sure that the cut is well healed even let it just let it grow you know let it just leave it and then when you see some roots coming out then go ahead and replant it and also they like especially the big ones they don't really like to be contained in a container so what happens is that they kind they sort of die when they're even if they're um, top growers like the top soil growers um, and they don't go all the way down. I think the only thing that, that goes all the way down are those how worthy is. And I, I'll show you the pictures, but um, those are the ones that actually grow roots that go all the way down to the ground. But the top rooters are just, they, they just stay at the top. So they want to go this way horizontally rather than vertically. So usually what happens is when it's contained vertically when you're constricted you can't go anywhere else um, they just start eating up the soil and then the, just the roots start getting bigger and bigger and it's um, mattier and mattier and you don't want that it, that's just it's just gonna kill the plant so my suggestion is is that if you're in a in a really nice 
weather area like you're you have really good weather um, and if you don't uh, you can still probably put it in the ground but just make sure that it's like underneath something like maybe an eave or something I don't know but the point of the matter is is that they like to spread out this way horizontally so if you have a container that would have that much room to spread horizontally uh, and then after it gets too big you might want to sacrifice that and just like propagate the pups out of that into an you know the same either the same pot or in a, a different pot but you just gotta monitor as much as you can when it comes to these types of echeverias i love them they're so pretty and in the winter when they're very stressed they get really really red and they just change colors for some reason they're green during the summer and close during the summer but then once um fall comes around and it starts cooling off um, they start to get redder and redder because, you know, here in California, we get the sun and then you got the really cold at night. So they just thrive on that. And I just, it, it, California is like the perfect spot for succulents, but it doesn't mean that you cannot grow succulents in your area. Just make sure that you give it as much, uh, sun or as much, um, yeah, sunlight as you can. Uh, I, I, and I understand that you want to have a garden full but then there's a caveat to that one too because if you have a garden full of succulents like i do there's a lot of um maintenance you have to do because the leaves die and then you have to like clean it up otherwise you'll you'll attract so many mealybugs and when once you have mealybugs especially ioniums my poor ioniums are just they just got infested so badly because it was so hot um last summer we didn't have we had a drought we didn't have any water whatsoever that's falling from the sky so but then you can't really water them because it's not their growing season so they're dormant and if you water them when they're dormant then you know you just you're just asking for trouble because they're just gonna die on you um, you got you can keep up the you know the pesticide and all that stuff but the only issue about that is that you got to keep it up every week and then you can't really wash them off because of the fact that they're dormant and they don't want water and all these stuff so uh, what I do what I normally do and what I'm gonna start doing is just cutting them off you know like in the springtime just cutting them off and replanting them somewhere putting it under um shade the ones that are over here um in the front where i put it under the shade they did really well in the summer they actually sort of kind of died off but then now it's just like whoom, you know and it's starting to puff up <laughs> puff up is the only word that, that i can you know think about it's prolific you know it's it's starting to fill out um out there but it's really ugly during the summer because they're just like bleh, you know but we have summer flowers but i do the only thing i don't like is that the maintenance you know the the reason why i'm doing this the reason why i have succulents is because i really don't like to maintain anything too much but since i have a uh yard full of succulents and a backyard full of succulents um, i have to really force myself to do it now guys if you want some of these succulents i'm going to show you what i have and um what i'm going to do is if you're interested in it, especially those ioniums they're so beautiful they're all i got all kinds of different ones if that's what you want i can send those to you in a small box and um we'll just do like some kind of um, a kit or something if you guys are interested um just let me know i'll have it on my etsy probably after this video is has been um posted and uh we'll see how it goes then you'll have like a bunch of succulents for your garden and that's it guys i'll show you what i have and i'll see you guys later i love you xoxo and come back next time bye
a one, two, three, four. 